everybody and welcome to this podcast. Today we have with us a distinguished guest, Dr. Nirtan Kumar, a consultant interventional cardiologist. Dr. Kumar has a wide range of expertise in cardiovascular interventions including coronary angiogram, percutaneous angioplasty, radial angioplasty, peripheral interventions, complex PCI and many more. He has also published original research articles in multiple national and international journals and our topic of discussion today is complex percutaneous coronary intervention welcome dr kumar it's a pleasure to have you here with us today thank you dr ashida it is my pleasure also to be in this podcast thank you dr so uh, let's dive right in so the yeah. first question is could you provide an overview of complex pci and how it differs from standard pci procedures in terms of patient selection and technique yeah sure so complex pci uh, as the uh, name pci suggests the pci means percutaneous intervention so the sta- in case of how do you compare it with standard and uh, complex pci so in case of standard pci we usually do it with the radial artery most common if it is any spasms are there in the radial artery, we'll go for the femoral artery through the uh, lower limb. So that is one uh, best thing and uh, most commonly done. And uh, through the radial artery, we can do it and the uh, catheters are passed and wires are passed through the artery and uh, we'll hook the uh, ostium or ostium of the left main or right or right coronary artery. Then we'll pass the wires and balloons and uh, we'll place the stent after passing the wires. So this is the standard PC or angioplasty, what we commonly tell us. So what differs uh, the complex PCI from this is, in case of complex PCI, we have to go through the larger uh, artery, that is femoral femoral artery. We can't, it's very rarely we can do it with the radial artery. So that is one first difference. Then, uh, because we may have to use the other uh, major different equipments like rotablators, intravascular rhythmopsy, different uh, wide uh, devices maybe have to be passed through the artery. So we have to go through the uh, larger bore artery like femur. After that, uh, we have to take the catheter which is of a wider fringe. So we should go with the six or seven French uh, sheets and seven, six to six French uh, guide catheters. And different wires has to be used in complex PCI. Uh, for example, in case of chronic uh, total occlusion CTO, that is 100% occluded since more than three months. So the thick cap of calcium will be formed in the proximal part in the blockage. So we can't cross that wire, cross that lesion with a normal wire or work horse wires. So we have to use the different wires with different tip loads to cross that and we have to do the drilling through that uh, lesion. Also, uh, we can tell that in standard PCI, usually we can do it with around 30 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes. But in case of complex PCI, we never know when we are going to cross that lesion. It may take longer or longer time. It may take longer uh, time of exposure of the radiation also and uh, we have to use the higher amount of dye for uh, angiogram and angioplasty compared to the standard PC. Also in case of CTU uh, like lesions we have we may have to use the different uh, uh, equipments like rota ablator to ablate the calcium just thick calcium around the, the vessels also we may have to use the intravascular lithotripsy which well, to break the uh, calcium in the eccentric lesions. Uh, sometime in case of uh, left main lesions or osteal bifurcation lesions, so thick calcium load. Also, sometimes wire may also may not be able to cross through that lesion. So it may be very small uh, area uh, where we couldn't negotiate, negotiate the wire. So in such cases, uh, different wires uh, we have to use the we may have to use the rota ablator wire, very thin wire, the small uh, diameter wire. Uh, then uh, we may have to use the, definitely we have to use the uh, uh, special imaging techniques like IVAS and OCT. So IVAS is nothing but intravascular ultrasound and OCT is uh, optical core and tomography. Uh, if there is any left main lesion, uh, we are not able to find out the exact uh, uh, lesion uh, percentage. And if there is any ostial lesions, bifurcation lesions, and if there is any high thrombus load in the arteries, uh, left left anterior descending artery or left circumflex artery. So if there is any uh, dissections, uh, then uh, we have to evaluate the extent of dissection and type of dissection and severity of the dissection. So the IVAS and OCT will come very handy for such lesions. 
so uh, in such way even in complex uh, complex pca actually we tell it as because of all this complexity whatever i told the complex coronary artery complexity of the lesion and uh, complexity of the uh, place of the lesion and also uh, sometimes the uh, it may become complex pca because sometimes uh, uh, it may uh, be due to patient presenting with uh, low bp cardiac uh, junic shock and some kidney disorder with failure and uh, if patient may be having uh, some uh, hemodynamic instability so some uh, such in such time uh, there may be some complexity in the anatomy of the coronary artery so such cases we have to go through the femoral artery and uh, mainly the lesion type of lesions and place of the lesion will make it a complex place for a coronary percutaneous coronary intervention Thank you, doctor, for the comprehensive explanation. Now, as you talked about IVUS and optical coherence tomography, right. so uh, how these technologies enhance procedural accuracy and patient outcomes? Uh, definitely, IVUS and OCT are a boon for a cardiologist and also for a patient, which has uh, significantly improved the uh, outcomes and prognosis and success rates of the percutaneous interventions. so previously if there is very high calcium load left main lesions and or bifurcation lesions uh, straight away if there is like triple vessel disease they were referred for uh, coronary uh, artery bypass grafting so with the availability of ivus and oct uh, the significant number of patients are undergoing this just by percutaneous interventions and they could be treated with this so the common feature of both this uh, ivus and oct is uh, we can see through the we can see, it's just like we are sitting inside the wall and see, seeing through the wall and what is the uh, what is the lumen size and uh, what is the uh, component of the plaques or thickness of the plaque and thickness of the intimal uh, uh, layer and if there is any dissection through that layer uh, dissection through that uh, layer of the artery so also in case of left main lesions uh, sometimes we may not be able to find the th- uh, exact thickness and exact uh, black burden or percentage of the stenosis because there is no reference artery for us it's the main artery which is giving the branches so left main and left hand lady and lcx so these are the right side they'll be right coronary artery so to find out uh, the exact luminal area and uh, uh, find the lesion uh, it will be very helpful for with ivas and oct so the major benefit of uh, oct is we can uh, quantify the volume of the plaque so sometimes we will call it as plaque burden and plaque vulnerability so the plaque burden is the volume of the uh, plaque and the component of the plaque inside the plaque so usually if it is the artery there will be this is the plaque between the layer this is the plaque so it will have a fibrous uh, cap if whether if it is a thicker cap so it is less chance of rupturing earlier if it is a thin cap once the pressure inside the plaque increases it is very high chance that it will burst open and form a plaque thrombus and form blockage in the coronary artery it will cause the what we call it as heart attack or uh, mi stemies all those things so it ivas and oct will help us to find the thickness of the fibrous cap component of that uh, plaque inside burden inside it and uh, whether it contains the high calcium or if there is any micro calcium in the uh, micro calcium calcifications or if there is any fibrous uh, component in that uh, plaque if there is any high uh, cholesterol component in that so these uh, if the type of component will also differs the further intervention and further decision making in the angioplasty so higher the calcium higher the component of the calcium then we may have to go for the uh, extra things like uh, rota ablations or intravascular uh, lithotripsis so this is one major benefit of this ivas and oct so oct will help us to find the will have high resolution to help us to find the black burden and the black volume but ivas has the benefit of high penetration it can penetrate through that uh, plaque and help us to find the thickness of the intimal layer and thickness of the coronary component and uh, uh, healthiness of the coronary artery wall can be found out with ivas and uh, one only a small drawback we can find out with oct is we have to clear the blood inside the coronary artery by flushing uh, some dye or uh, uh, ns and uh, to clear the blood component because they will interfere with the oct function usually basic principle of oct is optical coherence tomography we call it oct is uh, abbreviation for optical coherence tomography so it will use the 
low current near infrared uh, right uh, light uh, reflection and uh, inter- interferometer so in this the scattering light will be negated and if there is any blood component any blood cells anything is there they'll interfere with the uh, capturing of that uh, reflecting light and it will affect the uh, proper fun- proper images we get from those in case fibers we need not clear the blood uh, component in the artery so we can just pass the ultrasound uh, that uh, catheter and you can find out the thickness and water components we have to find so both uh, will help in finding out the um, uh, help in uh, the pca of bifurcation relations and also uh, they help in finding out any dissection as i told earlier so compo- type of dissection depth of dissection in dissection what happens it will form a false lumen in the false lumen the blood will start collecting and form a hematoma and it will block the uh, actual luminal area of the artery and as the time progresses sometimes what may happen the lumen may completely get obstructed and form because suddenly what it causes uh, uh, am i heart attacks so stay me your instinct also uh, in uh, case of left uh, left main lesions and uh, bifurcations also what i told uh, calcium a uh, thick calcium like thick uh, high calcium load can be found out with both uh, both ivas and oct and uh, these th- these two uh, imaging techniques also help us to find out the in case of post pca patients so some patients who will be diabetic will be having some mi or inferior or anterior wall some anterior wall mi they had some led they lesion they had in the previous previous time some few years back and they are some few months back so they would have undergone angioplasty stent is being placed there and uh, if they are diabetic they are more prone for instant inst- uh, instant restenosis will there but in blockage of that stent because of uh, any new antimal hyperplasia or uh, under uh, deployment of the stent so that may also be the cause of uh, stenting so these images help us for proper deployment of the stent inside the wall so when we go through that uh, lumen we can see whether the struts of the stent are properly uh, placed and uh, they are uh, attaching to the wall of the artery so that there is no space in between the stent struts and the wall so that proper opposition is very important to prevent the restenosis so these will help us post post uh, angioplasty when we do the final imaging imaging through that uh, artery so they will uh, show us the proper uh, position of the stent so that uh, uh, opposite opposite to the wall so this will prevent the under uh, deployment of the stent and it will definitely prevent the uh, instant restenosis uh, percentage uh, prevalence and uh, in the future so this will also help us to increase the success rate and uh, uh for a better prognosis of the complex species so uh these are the major uh, benefits of the ivas and uh, oct yeah uh so doctor uh, my next question is uh, could you uh, explain the role of fractional flow reserve guidance in optimizing pci procedures especially in cases of uh, complex lesions yeah the f- fractional flow reserve is nothing but we will uh, measure the pressure gradient between uh, when there is a artery when there is a lesion here you will pass the catheter so it will pressure the pressure gradient from from the proximal part of the artery that is normal and post blockage after the blockage whatever the artery is there so it will measure the pressure over there so it will measure the pressure gradient in between the normal component proximal component and distal uh, post obstructive uh, part of the artery so we'll calculate the ratio if it is less than 0.8 so it is significant uh, lesion okay less than 0.7 so 75 we we'll, we have to go for the pca stenting so if it is more than 0.8 it is insignificant lesion so there is another component for instantaneous uh, wire um, wave if ifr something is there flow reserve is there so that is also same thing which is uh, helping for finding the significance of the lesion so this ffr the usage of ffr is most commonly in uh, in a lesion which is uh, borderline lesion sometimes as i told you earlier so lesion if it is 70% and more than 70% we have to do a stenting and open the artery so because less than 70% lesions can become 90% uh, less than 70% lesions uh, can be treated with medical money 70% and above 70% lesions according to the guidelines multiple trials and studies so it's very high chance the patient may have mi in near future or any time so 70% can become 90% in very uh, 
small uh, amount of time so there is high chance of mi so this such uh, lessons has to be uh, standard so uh, for example if we do a uh, angiogram for a patient so lesion comes out to be around 60 to 70% so in such cases we will be in a doubt that whether we have to stand or we should not uh, do the standing just by fluoroscopic angiogram so we can't uh, decide with that so this has been a problem uh, earlier with ffr uh, which is uh, actually a very good uh, guiding tool for the for the decision of such lesions so what we will do we'll pass a wire through that uh, lesion and cross that lesion and uh, we'll measure the pressure gradient and the, if the The ratio is less than 0.75. We'll go for stenting. If it is more than 0.75, we'll we can defer the stenting. Actually, we can prevent the uh, unnecessary stenting for so many people with this procedure. Also, we can prevent the MIs and uh, further complicated uh, uh, lesions or compli- complications or prevent the further heart attacks by stenting such lesions if it is significant lesion. This is a very major benefit of the FFR and. Uh, even in case of uh, complex pci the complex pci is nothing but with the high calcification or bifurcation lesion if we can uh, if there is any bifurcation lesion with the lady left main artery branching into lady and lcx if there is some lesion in the lcx so we thought we have to do a bifurcation lesion so usually the outcome of or uh, the prognosis of bifurcation lesion it is less little bit lesser and morbidity is little um, little bit higher morbidity is a little bit higher compared to a standard pci a single stent procedure so uh, we see that uh, we have to stent this lady because there is significant some 90% lesion calcified so but also we sometimes will th- think that there is uh, in, from the origin of this artery also some blockages there and we are confused if it is 50 to 60% something or whether it is 70% sometimes the it is just a visual uh, eyeball uh, measurements whether it's 70% or 50 to 70% so in such cases we can use ffr find out whether it is significant lesion or significant blockage which is uh, which can be harmful in the future if it comes out significant we can go for the bifurcation stenting if it doesn't come out to be a significant lesion we can defer the uh, this one uh, bifurcation stenting and we can prevent the uh, extra stenting and we can also increase the outcome and uh, success rate and also increase the prognosis and reduce the morbidity factor and mortality factor for the patient so in such ways uh, also ffr is helpful in case of the patient with any artery is there with multiple blockages blockages in multiple uh, regions so it helps to uh, find out the uh, which lesion is more significantly affecting the uh, artery which is the most significant lesion sometimes so that is one benefit also in case of left main lesions so it helps in finding out the significant lesion and also in case of a uh, triple vessel disease if the tri- uh, if there is a blockage in the three vessels so if we have to find out which is the significant lesion sometime so it also helps in that so these are the major benefits of fractional fluorism yes and uh, doctor for uh, patients with uh, multi vessel disease how does a staged pci approach differ from a one time complete revascularization strategy okay. and what factors influence this decision actually it's very good question so uh, actually in the, the patient presents with there are uh, in acute coronary syndrome there are three components one is acute coronary syndrome with uh, st elevation mi that is major heart attack what we call it as lame lame words and there are some things we'll call it as n stemi and ultra this one usa unstable angina which some which lame and call it as minor heart attack so in case of stemi we can find out the st elevation in the ecg troponin is higher and his ef has reduced so he has to undergo primary pci within the golden hour of 1 hour so in case of n stemi and uh, unstable angina we can wait for some time and uh, uh, treat them with uh, uh, anticoagulants and uh, usually those patients will be stable n stemi and unstable angina the stemi patients usually uh, if they have uh, inferior wall mi they will present with hypotension that is cardiogenic shock or lower heart rate because there is one artery which is supplying the pacemaker of the heart so they will come present with they present with bradycardia and hypotension that means the patient is hemodynamically unstable so even if there is any lesion in the uh, anterior wall mi with the uh, left atrial descending artery blockage they will present with failure uh, and also sudden hypotension all these things so sometimes uh, ventricular tachycardia vt arrhythmia 
so the patient uh, if is un- hemodynamically unstable and uh, he is presenting with hypotension and also with uh, bradycardia and also uh, another complications of uh, failure and all in such patients we can't do uh, complete revascularization so in in the such cases the the motto is you have to open the culprit artery as soon as possible take the patient inside the cath lab as soon as possible door to balloon time should be less than 60 minutes 70 60 to 70 minutes so pass the wire cross the lesion as soon as possible balloon the lesion as soon as possible and put the stent uh, in the place as soon as possible and bring out the patient out of the cath lab as soon as possible okay so your procedure time should be minimal in such patients so in such patients we can't do the complete revascularization so for example if a patient comes with some inferior wall mi inferior wall mi usually caused by uh, a blockage in the right coronary artery or sometimes with the left coronary left the circumference so with bradycardia hypotension everything so we do the angiogram we see that uh, right coronary artery is 90% blocked with thrombus everything and we also we also see that in the left artery left side artery there is significant 90% blockage so in such cases there is something called culprit lesion and on culprit lesion in this one the culprit lesion is the one which is caused the infarction or mi or the blockage which has caused the uh, heart attack in simple words so we have to open the right coronary artery first bring him out, bring him out of the hemodynamic instability uh, pump him with uh, fluids and also with uh, anotropes and uh, open the artery put the stent and bring him out of the cath lab so we have to uh, provide a rest for him for uh, some 2 to 3 weeks then we have to do the stage pci for that uh, left sided artery so this is one example where we can't do uh, uh, complete revascularization in one stroke so there is fact some complications where we can't do or where patient presenting with uh, bradycardia hypotension cardiogenic shock if the patient is having a, a kidney disorder renal failure we can't use much dye for the patient so we have to do a stage pci for such patients we can't use a high dye so the patient will go into sudden acute renal failure also sometimes what happens if there is any complicated we are doing some complex pci so both the lesions are complex left and right so in such cases we can't do both the cases we have to do select one uh, culprit lesion and we have to do the complex pci for the patient and sometimes during the procedure some what happens the patient may have the local site bleeding or uh, femoral artery bleeding or retrosternal bleeding something may happen some complications can happen through the through local site through it we pass the catheter so in such cases we have to complete the procedure as day as possible and plan for a stage pc and during procedure if he, the patient is not maintaining his bp and uh, patient is still having hypotension then he have to complete the procedure as soon as possible and plan a stage pc so in such all such cases uh, we have to be uh, very fast and swift and uh, we have to do a stage pc just you know you can't plan for a uh, complete revascularization so even guidelines and all multiple studies have shown the good uh, same uh, results or conclusion that it is best to do a primary pci do the stenting of the culprit artery then go for a stage pci for the non culprit lesions so on the other side if there is end stemy or uh, ultra uh, this one unstable angina patient you know we'll do angiogram there is multiple lesions all the three arteries are uh, blocked or left main is blocked so patient is very stable this doesn't have any hypotension and any kidney disease or anything and uh, no no complications due to the procedure so in such patients uh, the uh, complete revascularization can be helpful so stable patients with uh, amenable uh, coronary artery structure coronary artery features or if there is a thank you dr nuthan for sharing your insights and expertise on complex pci it's been an enlightening discussion and we appreciate your valuable contribution thank you dr ashita for giving me a platform for sharing my insights for the complex pci hope it has helped the audience uh, seeking for some information regarding complex pci uh, thank you so much thank you so much doctor and to our esteemed audience a huge thank you for tuning in and before we say goodbye i encourage you to explore our medsynapse platform it offers a unique opportunity to engage in enriching discussions connect with esteemed medical professionals and contribute to the progress of healthcare until we meet again take care and keep advancing in your medical journey i am your host dr harshita signing off goodbye